you all right guys in this video we're going to be looking at cold air feeds and specifically do they do anything the reason for this test is that uh, some induction kit manufacturers KNN is probably the most obvious one supply at least some of their kits like with a random piece of hose that you're supposed to mount somewhere on the front of the car and then point it against the uh, the induction kit filter at the end of the test hopefully we'll have uh, an idea of do cold air feeds do anything? If so, under what circumstances? And if they do do something, how best to use them? Let's get into the car and let's collect some data. This is the run with the exposed cone filter using the stock cold air feed. Ambient temperature is 37. Intake temperature is 47. We're going to log the temperature after 10 seconds, 30 seconds, and what it gets to at a cruise. So that was a brief rundown of how I got the numbers. So just a quick recap, I, there was four tests, one with a stock air box, stock air feed, the other one was stock air box with no air feed. The third was the cone filter exposed in the engine bay with no cold air feed. And the fourth test was the um, exposed cone filter in the stock air box location using the stock cold air feed. Um, I measured uh, temperatures at idle until they stabilized for each setup. I parked at the bottom of the hill and I started up up the hill and I recorded the temperatures after 10 seconds, after 30 seconds and then at a steady speed. These are the numbers that I've got. You can pause it if you want to, to read the numbers. So generally the conclusions I came to were that temperatures are generally lower with a feed than without and that can be said for the exposed cone filter or for the standard air box. And the best use of a cold air feed is when it's feeding a sealed enclosure. And the big question is though, is a cold air feed worth the effort? Is it worth constructing it, routing the pipework, etc.? The conclusion I came to is that basically if, you, if the stock intake piping is there, if you've got the stock cold air feed, then I don't see any reason not to use it. I don't see any reason to take it out. It's, it's not going to do any harm. If on the other hand, you don't have the stock air feed anymore, I would say it's probably not worth bothering with a cold air feed and the workers involved in uh, getting it ducted, routing the pipe around the engine bay, etc., etc. I would say you're better off uh, focusing on uh, heat shielding. The airflow to the filter is not really a problem from what I can tell here. Obviously, doing both is better. If you're going to choose one, the heat shields or the cold air feed, I would definitely lean towards the, um, the heat shields. So that's the video guys as always if you've got experience of doing this feel free to let me know what you found out your experiences of using heat shields and cold air feeds that's the video for now look after yourselves subscribe to the channel and i'll see you again in the next video